This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We come together as people of God on the first day of the week. To begin the week praising God and all His mighty acts of love and mercy. To begin the week setting our hearts and minds on Christ in order to live this week as His disciples. To begin this week renewing our resolve. Build God's kingdom all on this earth for His glory and honor. All praise the mighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, unto you all hearts are open and unto you all desires are known. And to you know secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our opening hymn is Sweet By and By and Coast Fairy Hymn Number 199. Stand and sing.
Now for children's time, uh, the, 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 you know, the river kid got in trouble, and this isn't unique to kids. Ever got in trouble about anything and someone asked, why did you do that? They don't really know. You really don't understand why you did. Don't, you don't always know when you hurt someone or why you uh, break a rule. It's just not always, you don't always know that what you've done is a sin. And sometimes you can't explain your own behavior. Uh, Paul has this problem. He says, I don't know, I don't do the good that I want to do, but the evil I don't want to do, I keep on doing. I really don't understand why. Now Jesus knows how hard it is to do, and that's why he came to be with us. And so what he wants us to do is do our best. Try to be nice. Try to love people. Try to try to uh, do your best to be that kind and loving and compassionate person. And sometimes you're just not gonna get it right. But that's okay. Because Jesus is there to pick us up and say, okay, we'll do it better next time. Peter said, above all, love each other deeply, because love conquers a multitude of sins. Our uh, song this week is uh, Put Your Hand in the Hand, and it was a popular song, and it got number two of the charts on May 1st, 1971. So, but putting your hand in the hand of the Jesus.
We all find ourselves over and over doing the things that, you know, I should get better, but I'm just not getting better. I'm struggling. <clears throat> Most of us are familiar with a with a, with the uh, program we've actually we've heard of it, Alcoholics Anonymous. Uh, it's uh, been around since the 1930s. Uh, some of us have had relatives. I mean, maybe some of you have participated in the in the in the Alcoholics Anonymous program. And it's based on something called the 12 Steps. And the 12 Steps are this are were developed in the 1930s, and they're developed by a man by a group of men that were very faithful. The Oxford group. And there were uh, uh, there was a Lutheran group, two two participants in the Lutheran group, this Lutheran group. And they were struggling with alcohol. Now, since Alcohol Anonymous has become uh, uh, <coughs> worldwide and developed these 12 step programs, there's a lot of 12 step programs out of it, out of it, that have grown out of it. Uh, or narcotics, or uh, sexual uh, uh, problems, or um, uh, all, uh, workaholics, uh, overeating, all these 12 step programs. The first step in the 12 step program is step one, we admitted that we are powerless over alcohol and their lives have become unmanageable. Well, yes, alcohol is a problem. It is one problem. It is one thing that leads to sin, but we can really say this about any sin and all sin. In fact, we can say this about sin in general. <clears throat> we admit that we are powerless over sin. And because of it, our lives have become unmanageable. It is when we give in to those sins, that we give in to those things that we know we're not supposed to do, when we don't show the love that God has us to do, we find out that's when our lives become miserable. Why is our life such a mess? Because we're messy people. We don't live the way we're supposed to. And the truth is, we are powerless over sin. Sin has had a big head start. And it's relentless. And it's, it's always there. It's always looking for an opportunity. It's opportunistic. Always looking for us to, to, to make a mistake for that moment, for just that one moment where we don't love as we, as we should. That one moment where we turn inward instead of outward. When we don't think about what would Jesus do. But by golly, we're just trying to do ourselves. When I was in Boy Scouts, you know, we had to learn trust for the oil bubble from the pretty time in Scout Law. And sometimes you just don't feel untrustworthy, disloyal, unhelpful, unfriendly. <laughs> it happens. Everybody has a bad day. Even the best of us have a bad day. Sin is relentless and the power is over. It's always there. We live in a world where, where that actually encourages that, that we have things like self-actualization. You know, that I, I'm... I'm the best I can be, and I just need to be the best I can be. No, we're never the best that we can be. And God knows that. That's why God gives us His loving guidance that's, that's, in the, it's, that's in the Bible. That's why He gives us the law. That's why He sent the example of Jesus Christ. So that we can follow, so that we can, we can understand that, you know, that we can be better. We can always be better. And when we become better, when we do better, our life becomes manageable. Because if not, our life is unmanageable. We're told that we are born this way. We have situational ethics where, well, okay, maybe it's not the, the best thing to do, absolutely, but, you know, for right now, it may be the best thing to do. It's better than the alternative. Well, you know, choosing between sins is not really being holy. But quite honestly, we live in a messy world. And sometimes we're presented with an issue where there is no good way out. It is the reality of the fallen world. It's about the reality of the sin that we are powerless in front of. We live in a world that says that nothing is absolute. And we're intimidated into silence. The problem is not that the world is pressuring into this, but we, we internalize it. We justify ourselves. We have that justification of that. That okay, it's just a little white lie, but you know, just to get me through right now. That moment where where we uh, where we compare ourselves to others. 
You know, well, it may not be good, but, but at least it's better than that guy over there. Or the, no one will notice. But I have you get me, nobody's going to find out. What harm does it do? Nobody. So God tells us to do. God tells us to be perfect. Even our Heavenly Father is perfect. He tells us that this is the way that you're actually going to live a better life. This is the way you're going to find joy. You're going to find satisfaction. You're going to find peace. There's something that comes deep within the soul when you know that you've been the person that God wants you to be. When you are perfect, as Jesus calls us, but we are powerless over sin. We don't like to hear that. We want to be large and in charge. We have these egos that say, I can handle this. I got this. I can do this. But there is a reality. There is a power. And <clears throat> it is much more powerful than we than, than, than us. We are tempted to gluttony, lust, greed, envy, wrath, sloth, vanity, and pride if you don't recognize that list. That's the seven deadly sins. And one time did a, a we're all familiar with the seven deadly sins. I did a sermon series on the seven cardinal virtues, which are the opposite of each one. Nobody ever heard of the seven cardinal virtues. They're focused on the seven deadly sins. We are powerless. But the good news is that Jesus is probably more powerful. And we're connected with him. Jesus calls us and washes us clean. It's Jesus who has that power over sin that we don't. And we have, we need Christ. We need that, that we have that dependency upon one who is more powerful than us. And he invites us and then says, come and be washed in my blood. He's saying, you know, washed in the blood of the Lamb. The, the reality is under him, you know, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And that's true. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. We are powerless, but Jesus is not. And he loves us. And he died for us. And he invites us to be his disciples. Jesus has the power that we don't. And that 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 bruises our ego. That tells, you know, that's you know, we, we don't like that. But that's the truth, and that's why we need that gospel. That's why we need the good news of Jesus Christ. That's why we need to lean on Him for those times when we can't do it ourselves. Sin is more powerful than we are. We are powerless over it, and because of it, our lives become men and men. We are totally dependent upon God. There's a clip going around, uh, the, and some may have been shown uh, by, uh, by Ron a couple, a couple of uh, weeks ago. Uh, it's a guy named Alistair Bay. He's a, he's a, a, a Scottish, I think, or Irish, Scottish, Irish, Scottish theologian. And he's talking about the man on the middle cross. And one of the points he makes in this video is, why are you here? Why are you here then? Why is that why is that that that, that thief that, 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 that Jesus said today you'll be my fair? Why are you why are you there? And the thing that Al Shabbat says is because he not because of me, but because he, because Christ said I could be there. Because Christ said I could come. We are fully dependent upon the invitation of Jesus Christ to join him. To be crucified with him so that we can be raised with him. To be baptized with him so that we have that connection. To be adopted sons and daughters of someone who is more powerful than the sin that surrounds us. The sin that stains this world. The sin that stains every single inch. What the, what the, what the, the, the reformers call the total depravity that surrounds us of our sin. We are powerless. But thank God Almighty that Jesus is not. And that we are His. And He holds us the palm of His hand. Our song of reflection is in the bottom of the Kindle, uh, then the, the bulletin. They
day to wait upon the Lord. I found out that Morgan would tune for this, but this is the tune that I know, so this is the way we're going to sing it. May we see this we sing. May that wait upon the Lord shall We thank you for all the gifts that you pour out so lavishly upon us. We thank you for the, the grace that you give us. Your Son, Jesus Christ, that surrounds us, that, that unmerited love that invites us to, to come and be cleansed of the, the blood of the, the, of the land, that we may see you face to face, that we may learn of your ways, that we may love you more dearly. Cleanse our hearts. Give us a new want to. Let us strive always for perfection. Tear down the walls that we build, that the slide of the rest upon our heart that, that continues, that, that, that stain, that stubborn stain that only that only Jesus can cleanse. That we may love you, that we may love your children, that we may love your creation. That we may be the people that you have called us to be. We thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who does what we cannot, who is stronger than we are. We thank you for all those that uh, you surround us with and encourage us, our fellow sinners along this, this journey of life, that help us through difficult times, that correct us and, and guide us and, and teach us. Those times that those people that we can also share our journey and, and, and sometimes be the, the word that, that you have for them. Open our ears to hear your voice. Open our mouth to speak your words. Open our arms to show your love. Not only to those around, in, around us in this room, but to, to all of our teams and all of those people. That they know that they hear that invitation. Sinner, you know my Jesus. We thank you for, for those that are giving of their time and energy for the good of the of the of all uh, mankind, of all creation, to improve the quality of life, our truck drivers, utility workers, those that stand uh, ready to come, our first responders, our fire department, our, our, our uh, law enforcement, our EMS. Be with them and protect them in their in the work that they do. We pray for those that are fighting the wildfires that are springing up in this dry land. We pray for rain to, to quench the, the fires, to, to, to green up the earth, to return the refreshment and, and, uh, and life to, to the hard, parched and bitter land right now. We pray for um, those that are suffering from the, the fires in, in Maui and, and the, the disasters that we hear that are around the world. We pray for peace among nations. The wars may cease, the many people may learn to live together in peace. We pray for leadership that is wise and compassionate. Leadership that, that, that uh, implements the love and compassion and, and, and uh, uh, for the good of all the people that they govern at our state, our national, our local level. We pray for our schools and our, and our, and our uh, hospitals. We pray for all those that are suffering from illness and injury and ask for your healing touch upon them. On this last weekend before school, there are a lot of people that are traveling, that are on the road. There are people that are going to, to colleges. There are people that are uh, just uh, seeing family the last time before summer and they get into the routine of the school year. Be with them and grant them peace and grant them safety along their journeys and bring them safely home. For all of these things we ask, and those things we don't even know we're supposed to ask, we place them in your hands, Almighty Father. In the name of your Son, we taught us all to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of forever. Is there anyone here that has a special joy or celebration or any concern that you'd like the Bible Christ to pray over? Yes, Dan. Um, we have a joy coming up the end as a birthday Thursday. <laughs> 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 for God, you know what I mean, you're getting older. <laughs> Almighty God, we thank you for Deanne. We thank you for the many years that you blessed her with. We thank you for the heart that you give her for you and the service that she gives, especially to the kids and to the youth of this community. Be with her and watch over her. Uh, give her all the joy, prosperity, and peace, but mostly love that uh, you have in store for her. Open your blessings upon her and her family. We ask in your name. Amen. <coughs> Well, it is the opening of school this week. Uh, Junction starts on, uh, on uh, Thursday. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And since Jesus is the truth, any truth we discover reveals Christ to us. Education is a form of worship. So we can know, honor, and love him more and understand him better through the work of his creation. Classes begin in Junction on Thursday. The teachers and staff have been preparing the classrooms. Football, volleyball, cross country have all begun their practices. The band is learning its halftime show. College students are packing up to leave for the start of fall semester. And even if you don't have any students, faculty, or school staff in your household, it seems our community as a whole changes its routines whenever school is in session. In all things, we seek to give honor and glory to God, to give Him thanks for all the benefits to us, and to seek His guidance and His protection and His divine promise. Larkin, is this you? Would you come forward? I know that you're homeschooled, but uh, so the school year doesn't really make much difference to you. Let's stand up here. Okay. You're about to begin your fall studies. The lessons you will be taught are for your benefit. There will be tools that you will need throughout your life to engage in commerce, participate in public life, and contribute to this nation as a participating and productive citizen. They will also equip you with the resources to live as a disciple of Jesus Christ in, in, in his commission to bring the good news of the gospel to all nations. Will you be attentive to your lessons, respectful of your instructors, cooperative with your fellow students, and persistent in your search for truth and understanding of God? Members of the body of Christ, we are instructed to train up a child in the way that he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Will you pray for our Protect him from all harm. Encourage him in his studies. Will you do your part to instruct him in the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, that he may respond to his call upon their lives, and enjoy the blessings he has in store for all those who follow him. We so as we go. Let us pray. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, you have commit, committed to your holy church the care and nurture of your children. Enlighten this student with your wisdom, that rejoicing in the knowledge of your truth, he may worship and serve you from generation to generation. Reveal your love for him and the truth that he discovers. Watch over and protect him throughout this academic year and forevermore. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Sharon? Bill Jordan? Educator? <laughs> <laughs> and for the teaching that is the end for the teaching that you do, it's you come for as well. <laughs> May not be formally in the school, but that's okay. Sure. Got another step. Educators. Jesus said, Whoever practices and teaches the commands of God will be called great among the kingdom of heaven. Will you strive to instill within your students a love of learning? Will you teach them what is true, keeping nothing hidden, no matter how difficult? Will you love your students, pray for their success? And do it all in your power to help them gain wisdom and understanding. Mm -hmm. Members of the body of Christ, will you pray for those who work in the school? Will you support them in their calling as they serve the children and families of our community? Will you love as Christ loved, setting the example of discipleship for all those serving in the field of education? So, let us pray. Oh, great rabbi, if you are perfect.
perfect teacher, open our hearts and minds to your Father's will. So let your love and wisdom pour out upon our school and those who work and study on and off campus. We ask for protection over campus and pray for their safety and of all those involved in extracurricular activities throughout the year. May we all continue to learn from you all the days of our lives, that we may love you and dearly and follow you more dearly day by day. Well, we come forward and stand the stand of the people we Members of the body of Christ, these families and the children we bless this morning, we do your part to share in your experience and wisdom to guide these parents to the paths of parenthood. We pray for each family. We support these parents in the raising of this child as, they, as he grows up to be a man of faith. So that's what we will. Do you affirm the commitment you made in holy baptism to surround all those before you this morning with a community of love and forgiveness as they grow in Christ? that they may confess the faith of Christ, crucified, proclaim his resurrection, and share in the royal priesthood of all people to his glory and his holy name, so as we do. Let us pray. Almighty God, we pray for these families. Be with them in the difficulties and joys of growing up. Make them strong for you in the gospel they have received and passed on to generations yet unborn, unblemished. Let us begin the academic year 2024 in hope, in peace, in love, and in faithfulness. For your glory and honor. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Our closing hymn is Rock of Ages, verses 1 through 3. Let's stand and sing.